So hello there and welcome to US Fly Workshop. What's up guys? Um, today we are going to be tying a fly called Krapla. That's actually an original Icelandic salmon pattern. But uh, this is made by request by a guy called Egil Gunn or Egil Gunnarsson. This is the Krapla as you see. Uh, tied on a hook number uh, 8. But uh, Krapla is, as I said, just uh, it's an Icelandic salmon pattern. It's not like a traditional trout pattern. And the thread we are using, that's a Semperfly Nano Silk 50 denier. And uh, we'll start by attaching the thread of the, uh, the thread of to, to the hook shank. But the Krapla is like, yeah, as I said, originally it's a salmon pattern made like in the 70s, late 70s here in Iceland. But uh, uh, the hook we are using, that's a traditional name from RX number 8. But as I said, yeah, it's uh, not a traditional trout uh, pattern, but uh, tied in many variation of colors, uh, trout. We'll take this fly as well, in this size and even smaller sizes on small double hooks and stuff. Um, the, uh, the tail of, of the fly, that's a peccary pig, uh, homemade one, uh, a peccary pig uh, fur or, or stems. I actually, this is not a peccary pig, but it's like some material, I won't tell you what it is, but it's a homemade peccary pig, that's all I will tell you. It's no animal torture, no no animal guilt uh, gathering this uh, material. So we, I'm using two, like a couple of them, maybe three for the for the tail of the fly. Uh, if you do not have those uh, peccary uh, pig uh, strands or, or or stems, if you do not have them, you can use like just feather stems, just like uh, when you're tying frances or, or some some of those uh, salmon flies with the with the feather stems. So you can just use them and color them like I did with this, just with a black pen. It's you know, it'll do the job. Uh, but we'll snip off the uh, of the accessing accessing material like here and I've used this fly with uh, good results uh, uh, not those colors we are tying it in but in like an orange color we are tying it in red and black today just to do something different from the uh, from the other Krapla video we have on the channel but uh, when we are yeah done with uh, attaching the um, tail to the fly, uh, we have to build up like the body of the fly, and we have to build up like a decent part of a body. Uh, adding to the tail of the fly, we will be adding just like uh, a black and and red uh, cock feathers, just like the body is made out of. Uh, just few fibers up and down and then just red uh, each side so it gets like red and black and uh, we'll be uh, like I said yeah tying as many flies as needed if somebody is requesting a fly that makes sense to tie I'm not gonna be tying <laughs> uh, much of uh, like um, traditional Silver Doctors or, or some Scots, uh, Jock Scots or some, like I do not have the materials for it. I have the no, I, I actually know how to tie them, but it's like, but those are not the flies we are fishing here in Iceland. We are fishing with more simple flies like this that are actually made for fishing. The other is like, I believe, maybe 100 years back they were fishing with them, but Today, though, those traditional patterns are way, way, way too big, at, at least for fishing salmon in Iceland. Uh, when we are done with the tail, so it sticks out like this, so it's just like um, part of the back end of the fly is uh, are those uh, fibers we just attached. 
the Krabla fly is like, I think in 1973 or even later, that by, and made by Christian Gislason in the north of uh, Iceland. He is one of, like we say, the godfathers of Icelandic uh, salmon patterns. He made so many great patterns that are actually working still today and, and used a lot by Icelandic anglers. Krabla is probably the most uh, known fly that Christian Gislason made. And therefore we are giving it a go here again the second time on the channel. This may not be the last time we tie a Krabla. Maybe a micro Krabla would be the <laughs> be the third Krabla on the channel. We'll just see. Uh, the beat we are using, that's just 3.8 mil uh, tungsten beat from Turo. And uh, you can use like a, a golden beat or, or a silver and it's just up to you. I thought the copper one would go well with the red and the uh, black color. Uh, the rib of the fly, that's just a medium oval gold, and uh, we attach that to the shank of the hook. And the gold does not come on the on or around the body un until we are done with the uh, with the wrapping of the feathers, creating the body of the fly. It is like a for some people like a challenging fly to tie, and I I totally understand that. It's not like a it's not the easiest uh, pattern. And like I said, we are making the body out of black and red feathers. So we start with a black feather and we are actually using a single black feather. It's like, it's a hook set number eight. It's a nymph hook. So uh, we do not need like a fully, uh, fully dressed, uh, fully dressed uh, fly. And then we'll be attaching the rat. We have to even the uh, stems here, just a little, a little bit. And we are making this out of three uh, rat cock feathers. And when we are tying, tying it in uh, multiple colors, like red and black, we will start with a black one. We'll start by wrapping that around the body and then we'll, the red uh, color comes in and then you have to work the feather out. It's like quite a job to tie this fly. That's the reason why the video is like almost 19 minutes. It's a long time. But uh, to strengthen the fly and uh, making the durability, increasing the durability, we will just attach like a light coat of uh, super glue or a sap gap on the, uh, on the body. And then we will start wrapping the black feather around. Yeah, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more content to come. There's going to be a bunch of content, absolutely bunch of content, new content coming in. in, in uh, now around Christmas, I don't know when this uh, <laughs> video will go on air, but we are recording this at the 17th of uh, December, so it's right before Christmas. But uh, there's going to be a bunch of new content coming in soon. It's like two videos a week at least. And some uh, lectures and some stuff. We're trying to improve the channel for free. It's for you guys. It's for free. Absolutely. Uh, when we are done with wrapping the black feather around, we will have to uh, take those three... Uh, red feathers we have and they must point in the correct way so um, as you see it's like not an easy task to wrap it just somehow you have to, have to keep them aligned together like so all tied together as possible and it's gonna be messy there are some fibers gonna be trapped under as you see already and you have to wiggle the thread, no, not the thread, the feather, around. And you have to be, you have to have it like this needle. You can use your potkin or, 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 or just a needle. I'm just using a simple needle for this. To comp away the feathers that are going to be trapped under. Then you have to catch the rest of the red feathers with our thread here. 
and the fly is going to be looking like something like this. Well, that's just a half job done. We have uh, yet we haven't uh, trimmed the fly. The tr trimming is like a it's like a, you need some exercise and stuff to trim it and get it good. But I will do my best for it. I I, I don't know if I ever learned to tie a karabla like Christian did. I never met Christian, but uh, we'll be doing it in our best way. So now we need to uh, fasten the thread here with a few tight wraps so nothing will, like, it, it's going to be it's in its place. It is placed and nothing is going to be uh, in trouble when we start to comb the fly. And then the next step is to take the needle and loose as many fibers that are trapped under the feather itself as possible. And even when that is done, take your brush, either a tapping brush or just this old toothbrush I, I use for for this kind of a job. Tapping brush might be a little too hard on this. You can like this damage and destroy the feather with a tapping brush, but uh, with the uh, toothbrush it's totally fine. And just comb, comb it. It's gonna be fluffier this way. And that's what we want. We want all the fibers of the feathers to stick out. That's the purpose of it. And with this feather, yeah, no, not feather, this fly. Uh, with this fly, I've caught some uh, trout, uh, Antarctic char, like in Transfeathers here in Iceland and some other places. It's not my, you know, I would go for nymphs, some other nymphs, rather than uh, the krabla. But uh, when the water is like murky and you need some colors to attract the fish, this might be an option. Then comes the fun part of this fly, that is to trim down the feather. And that's one heck of a job, I tell you guys. And... Uh, it's, um, of course, nice to have a rotary vise. Uh, my Ransetti is an excellent vise. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, the the deal is that uh, you, you have to cut it and trim it down in steps. So don't take too much in the first cast. Uh, that means you cannot uh, take too much already. You have to like save some and do it the first first round has to be like this then you go with your uh, brush again to take away any loose uh, feathers uh, something that uh, should not be there like some feather fibers that has already been chopped off and then before we do anything uh, further before we go any further then you have to wrap the oval gold around and you have to wiggle the gold like this just in between the uh, feather so it's not gonna be too much visibility but uh, we do not either want too many fibers of the feather to be trapped under the oval gold that's why we keep the oval gold like this and that's why we put it on now not after we trimmed the fly totally and uh, make sure that uh, the gold is just in its place, like uh, grabbing it with our thread and totally attaching it safely. Then we can turn the bead a little bit around like I did and make sure that the thread is tied up to the bead. Then at the moment we'll do a whip finish job on the fly. A couple of knots. And that is done before we... Uh, that's done before we uh, go totally into the the final steps of the of the trimming. Uh, I I don't know if you can use like a machine or something to trim it. I I <laughs> I stick to my old uh, old very old uh, Doctor Slick scissors for that. But um, you have to keep the scissors in about the same position. Use the rotary. The rotation of the vise 
so you get kind of like the same angle of the trimming three 360 degrees around the fly uh, now we can loosen the fly take the fly out of the vise and get like a hackle plier to keep the fly in or something to whiskey tap or whiskey bottle or <laughs> just whatever you have and hand hold it hold it like free in your hand and you can get the scissors uh, closer to the fly in a better position And one benefit with with this taking the fly out of the vise is that you can reach other spots and you can turn it like reverse it in the vise to get to some angles that you cannot do the other way around. And uh, the hardest part of uh, trimming the fly is probably the fibers that are in the hook band and on the belly of the fly. That's probably the uh, the hardest one. Those fibers on the back, just leave them there. Uh, I'll, I'll suggest to just let them be. It's this part here I'm talking about. That is the non-easiest or the hardest part to reach with your scissors because of the hook itself. But you can go on the sideways and trim the belly. Little by little, of course, not too, too much each time. And we do not want this um, fly to be too slim and not too uh, too bulky at all. But something like this. And with the Krapla color combinations, that's just play of your own mind. If you have, if you want to have only black Krapla, just tie it with black feathers and blue and green and orange and red and white and just any color you can think of, even purple. Just do it. The fish is gonna judge your fly, no, not some Insta Instagram viewers of your Instagram account or, or or YouTube or Facebook account. So we are done with trimming the crabla, and we'll apply just the uh, hat cement or the uh, or the Solaris bone cure material. It's a UV UV resin, ultra thin one, but it hardens very quickly with the uh, UV torch. That's what I like about it. And yeah, the Krapla is then ready. I'm satisfied with this one and ready to try it out next spring. So I just want to say to, to you guys, thanks for watching. And remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.